Hey guys, Wrench here. Thought I'd uh, do a little video showing you guys how to set up my uh, my carrier script. So uh, first things first, uh, you can open the demo mission with 7-zip or rename it to .miz, open it with whatever you, uh, whatever you use. And uh, I'll show you where to pull the script from. Uh, I pronounce this Lion, I think it's L10N, I just say Lion. So we're going to open that folder, open default, and get wind 2.lua is the one we're looking for. Got a little bit of documentation here, which is uh, still work in progress, but this will sort of help to outline what you guys have to do. So to set this up, we'll jump back to DCS. Because this is a carrier mission, the first thing I'm going to do is throw it on my carrier. In this case, I'll drop down the Stennis, and we got to give him a name, which I'll be really creative and name him Steve. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go to the uh, triggers and uh, start setting that up, which is outlined in the documentation. Like I said, that's uh, there's a line missing in there. I got to remember to add before I post it, but uh, we'll just go through this step by step right now. So we're going to go to mission start. Uh, no conditions, obviously, given that it's a mission start. Excuse me. And uh, do script file. And we're going to load mist, which is in the. Uh, the demonstration mission, or of course you can get it from the uh, GitHub repository. All right, and then we're also going to do another do script file, and that's going to be that git win 2lua that's inside of the demonstration mission. So that's all we have to do now. So let's take a look in the documentation, see what the next thing we have to do is. So once, time more than five, and we have a little script that we got to put in. So uh, once time more than five seconds, it just has to be anything more than zero. Uh, five seems to be pretty standard. Uh, then do script, and I'll just paste this right from the documentation. So unit one is, what do we name the carrier? So that is going to be the name of the carrier, but it has to be in quotes. Uh, single quotes or double quotes, doesn't matter as long as you use the same both times. So I'll go quote, uh, Steve, quote. Uh, the distance is um, has to do with internally how the how the script works. It basically just creates waypoints for him uh, to follow, uh, and that's how far away the waypoints are from his current position. Uh, a thousand works well. Uh, if you go too low, um, he'll just kind of end up spinning around in circles. So just use a thousand; it'll work for you. Now, dist IP is a little bit uh, harder to explain. It's how far from his original um, mission editor position he'll go before he turns around. And I put that in there, you know, so that he doesn't go halfway across the Black Sea or, you know, fl uh, sail directly into an enemy port or something. Uh, some kind of behavior that, uh, that you don't want. So you can set that to kind of any distance that makes sense, and it's in meters. So what I'm gonna do is set this to 10 kilometers. Uh, and you'll see why. I'm actually going to set it to 5 kilometers. Okay, uh, that way I can demonstrate uh, how that works. Now, uh, if you're worried about it, uh, you don't have to like measure the closest, uh, excuse me, uh, the closest part of the shore and set it to that or anything. Uh, if he gets too close to the shore, he'll automatically return. Um, so don't uh, don't worry about that too much. Uh, that said, if you have a southerly wind, don't put him just north of the coast, or he'll just end up turning around a million times, and you'll never have time to land. Just you know, things to be aware of. Okay, so that's that one. Now the next one is a switch condition, and then it has uh, uh, two conditions that need to be met, and then uh, two things that it does. And the first one is a little bit more script, so I'll go ahead and copy that. We need time more than 60, flag is false 3. So let's go new, switch condition, time more. And again, this really just has to be more than um, uh, 5 seconds, but I go with 60 because there's no way he's going to get very far in a minute. All right, and then flag false three and the first one was do script and then again we need his name and just to demonstrate I'll use double quotes this time Steve all right and I believe the other one was just a, a message to the relevant coalition which obviously in this case is blue so message to coalition blue and this is uh, 
Actually, it says too close to shore in my uh, default. So I'll just say Stennis is returning to IP. Uh, and that's just so that you, uh, just to pop up and say, you know, hey, just, you know, wind direction is going to be messed up. You may not be able to land right now. And then once he gets back to his IP, it'll flip around. He'll start following the wind and uh, then you can go back to doing your landings. Um, oh, and just so you guys know, the lines that set up which flag this is, if you're a Lua guy, you want to you want to change that. Um, come down to the bottom, and it's these two lines right here. Uh, now, the reason that I didn't put those as arguments in the function here is just so the guys that aren't as familiar with Lua uh, don't have a ton of, of stuff that they have to set up. You know, keep it as uh, about as simple as I can. With the obvious exception of having a completely uh, eliminatable <laughs> argument in there for a thousand meters, but hey, yeah, nobody's perfect, right? So anyway, if you're a Lua guy, uh, you can come in here and and uh, <coughs> man, I'm sorry, uh, change that to whatever you need. Anyway, so there's uh, the last one we need is switch condition flag true four. And then we got just a little bit more script to do. Okay, so switch condition. Flag is true this time. Remember the last one was false. This one's true. Okay, so flag true four. Do script and just carrier returning false. And basically that's just to toggle him between the returning state and the wind following state. Okay, so right there the script uh, will run. And right now we have no wind set up. So basically he would just go 25 knots to generate a 25 knot wind. And he will default to heading south because the wind defaults to north, even though there is no wind, right? So we can set a wind direction, even though the wind's not moving, and he will move in the appropriate direction. But uh, uh, we're not going to run that because it's fairly self-explanatory. What we are going to do is come to maximum zoom here. Uh, my little pictures aren't showing up in a minute. For whatever reason, I don't know if an update broke that or something, but uh, we'll try to guess. So I'm going to come down to uh, static objects, add a structure, scroll down to the bottom. It takes a second with my mod I've got installed here. And I'm going to just throw a windstock down, hopefully on the deck. And then use uh, offset fixation to <laughs> Steve. And that will uh, that'll just help give us some, some visual ID on what's going on. Okay, so that should be pretty much everything. I'm just going to go ahead and give ourselves five knots of wind at uh, 120 would make sense. Now, I'm not cherry picking that number because it happens to work and the rest don't work. It every, Anything works, including dynamic weather. I'm just picking that because uh, that way he'll turn about 60 degrees and give us a good view of him turning and then not be obnoxiously turning forever. So... Right here, before the script loads, we can have a look at we can have a look at the windsock and say, "Ooh, man, you do not want to be trying to land on that. That would not be fun." Uh, after ten seconds, the uh, script loads and uh, and he'll start turning. Let me go back to the F9 view, and we can see he's going to start uh, accelerating in order to get that 25 knot cross uh, 25 knot wind over the ankle deck and. Uh, He'll go ahead and turn. Let's speed up time a little bit until he's done turning. Okay. And yep, right there. So he's at three zero eight. Uh, the reason that that's not a perfect reciprocal of one two zero, which is the the uh, the wind direction, you know, he's flying into the wind. Uh, the reason is because that deck is angled uh you know he needs to be flying and he needs to be moving at a slightly different angle so if we zoom back in on our windsock we can see that it's nicely aligned with the uh the angled deck that's going to make our lives a lot easier trying to land so we'll just go ahead and let this run for a while let him travel five kilometers and then we'll see what it looks like when he turns around and uh, we'll come back to you then okay so he just started his turn a couple of seconds ago and uh, you can see we got that message, carrier is returning. And uh, again, it's just doing that uh, to let us know, hey, wind direction is going to get messed up. Might not want to be trying to land right now. And I can demonstrate that by going back to our windsock. 
and I move that view again, sorry about that, we can see that it's no longer aligned with the flight deck uh, just because of that wind speed. So even though he's going 26 knots, the wind direction is still all messed up. Uh, so we, we get that message just saying, hey, you know, let's uh, give it a minute before you <laughs> try to land, let him let him get back. So there's kind of a balancing act you have to do of how long of a stretch do you need of being able to land versus, you know, how long is it going to take him to get back so you can land again if you happen to return and, you know, oh boy, oops, we can't land right now. And again, he's just going flat out as fast as he can. Right now, it's actually 27 knots. So he's uh, he's just going, you know, flank speed or whatever, the fastest that the he can go in the sim. Just to get back there as quick as possible. Now, uh, so a couple other quick little things I want to mention about the script. Um, uh, so, uh, Every time that uh, this function is called in order to basically generate the next waypoint, it measures the wind speed and direction again. Uh, the reason that it does that is if you have dynamic weather, so he's moving through changing weather patterns, or the weather is moving over him, uh, changing wind speed and direction, he'll respond to those changes. Um, rather than just saying, hey, here's wind speed direction, just keep going that direction, regardless of what the wind is doing. So as the wind is changing, he'll react accordingly. So uh, so anyway, right now he's uh, he's still making his, making his turnaround. Uh, but what he's going to do is just turn to a reciprocal heading, head back to where he started, spin around again, and start following the wind. So uh, I guess for those of you that are interested, I'll, uh, I'll let this run until that happens. Okay, here we go. He's just starting his uh, turn back to uh, the wind heading, and you can see we're no longer getting that message. Um, so technically, while he's turning, you know, the wind is still going to be messed up, and you'll stop getting the message. Uh, but the fact that the carrier is <laughs> is turning is uh, typically pretty obvious. You can see in his wake. Uh, you know, so if you're coming in and land and you see this, you go, "Oh man, he's still turning into the wind." You know, we uh, we'll go around and marshal for another minute or two, let him let him get sorted. Um, one thing to note is you can put him in a group with other boats. That'll work just fine. Uh, won't have any, they, they typically don't have any problems sticking with him. You know, they'll just follow him around. They follow him through the turns. Okay. No problem there. Uh, just wanted to mention that again, the script is kind of work in progress. It hasn't been super, super heavily tested. So there will be bugs, problems, and messed up stuff. And, you know, if you're a Lua guy, you can scroll through here and go, like, oh man, you know, there's probably a lot of stuff in here that could have been done uh, a lot cleaner than I did it. Um, you know, I'm not really a, a professional in any way. Uh, basically just kind of stumbled my way through <laughs> code and stuff and trying it until I got it to work. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the script. Um, makes your lives a little bit easier setting up and, uh, and uh, helps you catch wires on those Case 1 landings. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you around.